This presentation will help you be able to design a flow system that will deliver a liquid at a given flow rate at a given pressure for a process. We will look at sizing pumps, control valves, determine pressure drops through piping, and how to tune a flow controller to give satisfactory performance through the control valve. We're going to start by looking at the requirements of the process. Imagine that we have water in a storage tank and let's say the storage tank is kind of low so that's the actual pressure at the inlet of the nozzle going out of the tank is at 15 PSIA. Our desire is to have 150 gallons per minute of flow rate at a maximum flow but we're going to design this with a 15 percent cushion above that maximum flow so that we be able to control this well. Our goal is to deliver to the process water at that flow rate leaving here at 20 PSIA and we're going to have 300 feet of piping from the storage tank to the process. So the way our setup will work is we'll have the water flowing through a ball valve, a pump, and another ball valve and these valves are used to isolate the pump should it need maintenance. We then go through a check valve and this purpose of the check valve is to prevent backflow into the tank. Our control valve loop will be teed off. It will go up through a ball valve then we'll have a control valve followed by another ball valve and that will return to our line where we would have an orifice flow meter. We can isolate this ball control valve with the two ball valves should we need maintenance and we can open up this ball valve to control the flow manually if necessary. What we're going to do now is look at how to design the pipe first and then the control valve and then the pump. So let's design the piping network from the control valve forward to our process. And we're going to do this using ChemCAD. We would have three unit operations that we're going to use. One is a pressure node, the second is a pipe, and the third is another pressure node. If we look at our feed, we set it at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 PSIA, we're going to design this with a total maximum capacity of 177.5 gallons per minute. That's at 15% over the maximum flow. Click OK. Our first pressure node, we do not actually know what the pressure is at that point downstream of the control valve. So we're going to select that it's going to be a variable pressure node. We'll give it an initial guess of 50 PSI, but ChemCAD will actually do the calculation for us. ChemCAD requires a minimum and maximum pressure, so I put in 15 and 120. The inlet stream will use the current stream flow rate of 177.5 gallons per minute of water. In the outlet stream, select flow set by unit op. If we double click on our pipe, we're going to first select a pipe diameter and let's start with 2.5 inch nominal diameter pipe of schedule 40, 300 feet in length. We'll select a pipe material as commercial steel. We'll also look at two other pipes of increasing diameter of 3 inch and 4 inch so that we can allow ChemCAD to help us decide what's the proper diameter. When we look at what is in our piping network, we have a ball valve, an elbow, a T where the flow comes in through the branch, and then an orifice meter. And we can insert these into the piping by clicking on valves. We'll tell ChemCAD we have one ball valve. Under fittings, here is my standard elbow and I also have an exit from the pipe coming out at the end. 
and under orifice I'll select an orifice bore size of one and a half inch which will be for our orifice meter here and click OK. I'll click our run button and let's take a look at what we have going through our pipe. If I double click on it and click calculated results I see that we have a pressure drop of 35.455 psi. What I'm really interested in is the pressure drop per 100 feet of piping, which is 7.55. Heuristics tell us that we should have something approximately 2 psi for every 100 feet of pressure drop. We can look at our case study number 2, which was our 3 inch pipe diameter and that pressure drop is 3.09 and then look at our case study number three which is a four inch diameter pipe and that pressure drop is 0.79 so if we're going to choose a proper pipe we could select between a three inch and a four inch pipe for our study looking at this variable pressure node ChemCAD calculated that we have 55.45 PSIA right before the valve. Going to click OK and I'm going to now instead of using a two and a half inch pipe I'll select a three inch pipe. Remove the case studies from here. Click OK. Now I'm going to run it and then looking at my pressure node now I'm only at 43 PSIA for that particular node double click on the pipe and we'll find under the calculated results we're at a pressure drop of 3.09 PSI and that will be satisfactory Our next step is now to select a proper control valve that will give us the desired flow rates. If we look at the control valve equation, we have our volumetric flow rate given by this equation where that will be equal to the control valve flow coefficient C sub V times the square root of the pressure drop across the valve divided by the specific gravity of the fluid. Our flow rate is given to us in units of gallons per minute and the delta P across the valve is in units of pounds per square inch. Heuristics tell us that we should select a pressure drop across the valve that is equal to either 10 PSIA or one third of the frictional pressure drop through the piping whichever is larger we look at the pressure drop in the piping from ChemCAD we see that our frictional loss is 23.6 psi so one-third of that frictional loss would be a little over 7 psi so we want to select 10 psi since that is larger calculating our valve coefficient from our equation we're just rearranging that equation so that's going to be given to us at 177.5 divided by the square root of a 10 psi pressure drop specific gravity water is 1 and that gives us a valve coefficient of 56 now we need to go to vendor catalogs to take a look at what control valves are available Mason Neelan is a common control valve vendor and they give us the details of valve coefficients for a number of valves. If we take a look inside the catalog we're going to look at two different valves. One is a linear valve and the other is an equal percentage. Heuristics tell us that our selection of control valves should be one pipe size smaller than the pipe that it sits in. We're in a three inch pipe so we will look at two inch uh, valve sizes for both the linear valve and two inches for the equal percentage. 
We're going to look at the valve coefficient as a function of percent of valve travel. So at 100% opening, if I look at my 2-inch valve, I find that we have a maximum flow coefficient of 46, which is less than what we desire. Similarly, for the 2-inch valve, an equal percentage of maximum flow coefficient also of 46. I can use a valve that's the same size as my pipe diameter, but if I look at that particular style, we have a couple of choices. If we chose the largest bore of our control valve, we would be opening approximately only at 50% opening at maximum flow for the linear valve and the same for the equal percentage valve. And that's not desirable. For our maximum flow, we should be up into the closer to the 80%, 90% range. So we have a couple choices. We can work with a valve that's not satisfactory, or we can increase our allowable pressure drop across the valve to help us get in that range. So instead of working with a 10 PSI pressure drop, I'm going to increase it to 15. That gives me a valve coefficient of 39. I can now go back to my 2-inch valve. 39 will top out right about 90% for our linear valve and also very similar to our equal percentage valve. So this will give us good control for our process by bumping up our pressure to 15 PSI. Now that we have selected the valve, we're going to look at how to put these into the ChemCAD program so that we can test how suitable they are for our process. I've taken the data from the mason Nealon catalog and looked at the valve coefficient for both the linear and equal percentage valve as a function of position. So at 10% opening, linear valve is only has a CV of 4.1. At 100% opening, it's 46. And then I did a calculation as to what the percent of the maximum CV would each one would be, because that will be the format that ChemCAD requires. Did the same thing also for the equal percentage valve. As a function of position, copied the CV values and calculated the percent of max. So now we're going to look at introducing this into our ChemCAD program. I added another pressure note, followed by a control valve, and inserted it into our flow sheet. For this pressure note, I'm now going to switch modes. I'm going to say I have a fixed pressure. In this case, I'm selecting 59 PSIA, which is 15 PSIA above what we saw for the node downstream of the control valve in the previous study. And now I'm going to select a free inlet stream because we'll allow the valve to determine what the flow is rather than us dictate the flow and select the outlet to be flow set by unit op. Our control valve we're going to put in a maximum flow valve coefficient of 46. In the operating mode, I'm going to fix the valve position and adjust the flow rate. And I'm going to specify the valve curve. This will be the valve curve taken from the vendor catalog. And we're going to operate this at a 90% valve position for right now to see how much flow we can get. ChemCAD also requires the downstream pressure of the valve and so what we're going to do is tell it that the ID is destination number one which reflects that node value number one and the variable is node pressure. Click OK 
and this is where we put in the information from the vendor catalog from percent of full stroke from 10 percent to a hundred and then I put in percent of full capacity not the valve coefficient number itself but percentage of the maximum valve so at 10 percent we would be at 8.9 but at 100 percent opening we would be at 100 percent of the full valve coefficient we can now run our program and see how we do so now we have instead of fixing the flow rate we're allowing that to be a free stream and we end up getting 168 gallons per minute at 90 percent opening remember our maximum flow is 150 if I open up my valve to a full valve position of 100 percent and click OK and run the program we will find that we get above that 177.5 gallons per minute right at the full opening of the valve so we can reach that 15 percent above the maximum flow I'm also interested in looking at how that flow varies with valve position because if I want to have a tunable process I want that flow to be linear with valve position if all possible and so I'm going to do a study where I change the valve position and look at the flow I can do this easily with a sensitivity study and I'm going to call it valve performance and what I want to do is for my valve which is equipment number five I'm going to adjust that valve position which is given by this menu valve position has no units now I'm going to select valve position and I'm going to vary this from 1% to 100% open in 20 equal steps I want to measure what the flow rate is as a function of this valve position so I'm going to click the recording and I'm going to record stream number one which is my flow I'm going to select the variable as total standard liquid volumetric rate my variable units would be liquid volumetric rate and I'm going to call this flow click OK and now I'm going to run this program by selecting run all <coughs> I'll now click yes under run sensitivity study valve performance I'm going to plot the results I want to plot flow versus valve position and click OK here is the tabular data but if I look at the chart we can now see how the flow in gallons per minute varies with valve position from 0% opening to 100% opening and we see that there's a little bit of curvature to this but nothing too drastic and so this would be a valve that we might want to use for our process but we also want to test out the equal percentage valve too. So I'm going to go back to my menu and now I'm going to select this valve to be have performance of equal percentage. I'll go back to my data. I'm going to copy the equal percentage data. Double click my valve and click OK and now I'll insert that data into the valve going to go back to my sensitivity study valve performance I'm going to click run all go back to run sensitivity study valve performance and click plot results click OK tabular data and here's my chart 
Notice for the equal percentage valve we have this S shape and this tells us that our valve is not performing very well with respect to linearity. The linear valve is far superior in terms of a constant change in valve position, valve flow as a function of position. So in this case we definitely would want to choose a linear valve over equal percentage. The conditions where an equal percentage valve would be desirable is when you have significant pressure drop in the pipeline due to friction or by having a number of other elements in that pipeline that contribute to friction such as heat exchangers, filters, a number of fittings and things of that nature. So our selection of proper control valve would indeed be the equal percentage valve and that will give us good performance. We now must get ready to determine what kind of output the pump will need to deliver in terms of pressure and flow. To do this we have to determine what the output pressure of the pump would be at maximum flow. So we are going to insert a piping into our ChemCAD program from the pump outlet through a ball valve, through a check valve, flow through a branch of a T, elbow and another ball valve that will give us the pressure we desire at the control valve. And we want to determine what pressure would be necessary to do this. So I inserted another pressure node into ChemCAD, another piece of piping that will take in count the ball valve, check valve, T elbow and other ball valve before my control valve. I'm going to set my flow rate to my absolute maximum flow of 177.5 gallons per minute. Again I'm going to have a variable pressure node and I'm going to have an initial guess of the pressure and I'm now changing the flow rate option where we're going to use the current stream rate going in and flow set by unit op going out and click OK. If I look at my pipeline I'm just going to select a very short length of pipe, say 10 feet, 3 inches in diameter, pipe schedule 40. Commercial steel is my pipe material. In it I have some valves. I have a ball valve at the outlet of the pump and a ball valve at the inlet of the control valve, so I'll have two. I'm going to have a single lift stop check valve which is going to be at this position here in the pipeline. For fittings I'm going to have a T where the flow will be out of the branch which coincides with this portion on the figure and a standard elbow. And there is no orifice meter in this line. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to run the program and look at my flow rate which is 177.5 gallons per minute. The pressure it needs to be in order to go through my piping with my control valve at 100% open is 63 PSIA. If I look at my control valve it is wide open and also note that I am now using my linear valve for my valve configuration. So I need a pump that can deliver 177.5 gallons per minute at an outlet pressure of 63 PSIA. In order to determine what the pump requirements are, we have to look at both the flow rate, which we already determined to be 177.5 gallons per minute, and also the delivered pump head pressure. 
and that will be the difference between the outlet pressure of the pump and the inlet pressure of the pump at which will be 63 psi minus the 15 at the tank and that will give us 48 psi now we have to find a pump that will deliver what we need for our process Gorman Rupp is a supplier of industrial pumps and they have a useful product selection tool which we will make use of so you go to their website grpumps.com and select under their products and go to the pump selector and it gives you a menu of various different types of applications we're going to choose an industrial application for pumps operating at 60 Hertz it asks us now what flow rate that we desire I'll put in 177.5 my total head well I'm at 48 psi so I'll convert units from feet to PSI and type in 48. I can change the fluid if I desire by clicking on this, but water at 60 is just fine. And I'll select all the various different series since I'm not certain which one will be the proper one for us. And I'll look at all speeds and click on the search button and now it will look through all the pumps that can deliver what we desire and what we see on the left hand side is a small picture of the pump curve and the little red angle there points to our particular requirements of 177 0.5 gallons per minute and 48 psi and what we're looking for is an intersection of this with a pump best efficiency point and the best efficiency points are located about halfway through the bend on a pump curve and so if I scroll down I'm looking for something that would be in approximately this re region here and I'll click on this pump and here it gives me the pump curve and a pump curve is a pressure head on the y-axis versus the flow on the x-axis in this case I have PSI versus gallons per minute and pumps come in different diameters uh, we have an 8 inch and a 6.5 inch let's follow the 6.5 inch curve so at very low flow rates our maximum pressure is about 67 psi and as we increase the flow we're going to see as we travel down the pump curve that the outlet pressure of the pump is going to decrease we also have on here are what we call the efficiency contours and so the pump efficiency in this particular region is 56 for other places it's at 54 50 percent efficiency 40 and 30 and so our pump desired position is at this point here and we're going to see if this would be satisfactory for us what I'm interested in is getting data off of this curve and I can do that by going up and looking at printed reports and clicking on data sheet it's going to ask me for a name so I'll type in Youngstown State University for my company and my name will be my own and click OK and it generates a little data sheet but what I'm interested in is this performance evaluation at different flow rates we have tabular numbers for gallons per minute at a fixed speed of 3450 it gives me my pump head at, 
and PSI, my efficiencies, and the power that the pump is using. So that we will use this information to supply a pump curve into ChemCAD. I've now inserted a pump into my flow sheet and also a different pressure node. So at the beginning, I'll double click on this. We're now at a fixed pressure at 15 PSI. This would be the outlet pressure of my tank. I'm going to select free inlet stream and flow set by unit op for the inlet and outlet streams respectively. If I double click on my pump, going to select specify performance curve. We're going to only have one speed line and that would be at 3450 RPMs. And the performance curve calculation option, I'm going to select the outlet pressure from a downstream unit op and it will calculate the flow rate and click OK. And now it asks me for the performance curve of the pump and we enter the flow rate in gallons per minute, the efficiency in fraction, not percent but fraction, and the head pressure in feet of liquid. So I converted the PSI data into feet of liquid and click OK. Going to sele select my control valve, I'm going to set it at 90% opening, click OK and I'm using the linear valve and I'm going to run the program. So with my valve at 90% open, find that we're at about 979 gallons per minute of water and that's fine. And now I'm going to run a, that sensitivity study again using this valve but now placed in this entire series. I'm going to click run, sensitivity study, valve performance, hit run all. So it's going through all the steps and this may take a while because it has to do a lot of internal iterations and calculations uh, as that valve gets slowly adjusted but eventually we will find that it will have complete all of the calculations for us while it's going through this. And so what I want to look at is how that pump and control valve work together in producing a flow versus valve position diagram to see how linear my plot is. So it's uh, rounding out the calculations and now it is at the final step I click yes and now I'm going to click run sensitivity study valve performance and plot the results I'm going to plot flow versus valve position again is my tabular data and if I look at my chart notice we have a, a little bit less than linear curve but that will suffice for us so we could try to find another valve that might have a more of a, a linear relationship but it's unlikely that we'll get that much difference and when we set up a process controller we will be able to tune it such that this nonlinearity is pretty much non-consequential in our process. Before we start putting in the process controller into our flow sheet, we need to understand how ChemCAD actually works when we're dealing with process control. And the first equation where we have the controller output, that will be equal to some controller gain K sub C, and that will be multiplied by the, the process error if we're working with only proportional control that would be the only term in our equation. If we wanted to add integral control we would have another quantity where it's 1 over a uh, integral time coefficient T sub i 
times the integral of the error from zero to the time t. And if we wanted to add derivative control to our process, we would have a derivative time constant t sub d times the change in error with respect to time. And then ultimately we're going to add what we call a bias. The bias is the position of the controller output or the value of the controller output uh, when we are at our set point operating at steady state. If we are at our set point, the error is zero, and so the bias would be just a constant output. In ChemCAD, the default output is in units of milliamps, where a zero value would be corresponding to a four milliamp signal and a 100% value would be equal to a 20 milliamp signal. The definition of the error can be one of two ways. One is it could be the set point minus the present value, or it could be the present value minus the set point. The easiest way to figure out which one you want to use is if your error is positive, your valve will open. So if we're dealing with a flow situation and say our target is 150 gallons per minute and our present value is say 140 gallons per minute, we want the valve to open. Therefore we would choose the error where we would select the set point minus the present value because 150 minus 140 would give us a positive 10 and that would correspond to a opening of the valve which is what we desire. ChemCAT doesn't use controller gain but really it uses a quantity called the proportional band which is labeled PB in the next equation and it's related to the controller gain K sub C where that equals 100 over the proportional band. So if we set a proportional band equal to 100 our controller gain would equal 1 and this is what we wish to work with when we get to putting a PID controller into our ChemCAD simulator. When we are ready to tune our control valve, there are several different methodologies that we can use to select the proper values of the controller gain the integral time constant and the derivative time constant. In this case we're going to look at a very old technique but it does have some value called Ziegler-Nichols Ziegler closed loop tuning. In that we're going to work with first only using proportional control only. And the way it works is we set our process and our bias on our controller and then we do a quick set point change and then we are going to continue to increase our controller gain until we reach a stable oscillation whose amplitude does not grow with time. So in an example the initial value of controller gain of 4 shows oscillations but after the first cycle we see that it is dampening. Increasing the controller a time, a proportional gain to 8 causes oscillations but you can see the amplitude is increasing. Setting it to 6 we have oscillations but they are slowly decreasing. Increasing the amplitude controller gain to 6.5 looks like a very stable oscillation whose amplitude might be marginally gaining just a little bit and 6.2 will give you a stable oscillation. Based on that we would use a ultimate controller gain which is K sub U equal to the value of the controller gain that gives us a stable oscillation in this case a value of 6.2 would be appropriate. The time difference between periods is known as the ultimate period and it's given to us as a value of P sub U and in this case 7.5 minutes would be the ultimate time period. 
At the bottom, we have a table on how to set your controller gain, your integral time constant, and your derivative co time constant based on the values of k sub u and your p sub u numbers. If we wanted to look at only pi control, we would take our ultimate controller gain of 6.2 and multiply it by 0.45 and our integral time constant will take the 7.5 minutes and divide that by 1.2 and that will give us that value. We're now ready to work with our ChemCAD program and what I did was inserted a PID controller at the end of my pipe right here and we're going to take a look at its menu so I'll double click on it and I'm going to tell it that my set point which I'm going to target 150 gallons per minute of flow and I'm going to click the activate controller and we're going to initially put in our steady state output is 12 milliamps and what we want to do first is to set up the ChemCAD program is first pick a very large value of proportional band and this will give us a very low value of controller gain k sub c so the only control action that the controller will take will be the bias and the bias is our steady state output p sub zero we're going to tell it that we're going to control uh, unit number five which is our control valve the variable min and variable max, that is the max and min flow in our system. So our minimum flow is zero, but we'll put in a just a slightly higher value than that, 0 0.0001. And the maximum flow is about 220 gallons per minute for our process. That's where our control valve is open at 100%. So we will select 220 as our variable max and that corresponds to a controller input of 4 milliamps at 0 0.0001 20 milliamps at 220 now we have to tell ChemCAD what our controller action would be by selecting our area and in this case we want the control valve to open if our present value is below our set point so we want a positive error when that occurs and that will be when we select the button that says reverse where when our value is below our set point it's going to open the control valve the variable that we're going to use for our measured object will be stream number one which and then we're going to select the uh, standard liquid volumetric flow rate uh, as the variable and the variable units will be liquid volumetric rate so the units of our set point will match the units of our liquid volumetric rate that ChemCAT has. It's also very important to check to make sure that the units you are using are what you desire. So if I clicked on engineering units, my liquid volumetric flow rate I have set in gallons per minute which is what I want. We also want to go from operating a from a steady state to a dynamic simulation and we can do that by clicking the run button selecting steady state dynamics and click dynamics and then we're going to set that up so under the run dynamics we're going to select the run time clicking step one I've already selected that we're going to run for 60 minutes and it's going to do calculations at 0 0.01 minute intervals for us and I'll click OK and I'm interested in looking at how the flow rate changes with time and also I want to look at what's the valve position with time also so I go under my run menu run dynamics and I click record streams so I type in one because it's going to record stream number one and I check the box that gives me a runtime plot while I do my simulation. I click OK and I want to plot the stream flow rate for this so I click stream, plot stream properties and I check the box that gives me liquid flow rate. Click OK. 
I also want to look at the valve position. <coughs> My valve is unit number five. So I'll check that runtime plot and click OK. And I select a variable valve position and I can check what time I wish it. Minutes is just fine. The valve has to know it's being controlled. And so my controller ID in my flow sheet is number 10, so I'm telling it's going to be controlled by that controller. And also, valves do not react instantaneously. They have what's known as a time constant. And generally, that's like, how long does it take to get to about 67% of a change in the signal? And we're going to put that time constant, in this case, of 0.3 minutes, which is 20 seconds. Larger valves would have a larger time constant. Smaller valves would have a smaller. But we want to introduce a time constant into the valve. And we're going to click OK. Again we're using my linear valve and so now I'm ready to uh, run my ChemCAD and before I do I want to point out under the convergence parameters check the box that says allow dynamic editing anytime this allows you to make changes during the simulation and when you do that you can stop the simulation, make a change, and then run it from that current state. The default is this box would be unchecked, and then you would have to reset to the initial time and start all over if that box is unchecked. So checking that is very useful for this. Click OK. So I'm going to click Run, Run Dynamics, and say Run from Initial State. And here by hitting escape I will stop the program it tells me it's interrupted gives me the charts valve position and my flow rate going to rearrange my windows so that I can see what I want to see more clearly and this will give me a better view of what I'm looking for so right now I have set my controller gain to essentially zero and ran this program so I'm working on only uh, the bias selecting my process flow sheet I'm now going to go under my run menu run dynamics and now I'm going to save this as an initial state. You'll see the value of that once I do that. So I saved it. I'll click yes. Okay. Now I'm going to set my steady state output. I'm going to set that to 12. 12 is essentially a 50% open valve. And I'll click OK. Going to hit run, run dynamics, and run from current state. And here we see the controller. We're now at approximately 50% valve position. My flow rate is 135 gallons per minute. Again, I'll remove these two charts. And this will be the last time I need to do that for this. resizing everything so if I now take my controller and change the output to say 20 milliamps let's see what happens go run run dynamics run from current state and now we see that my valve is opening up to a hundred percent and my actual flow rate is 185 gallons. Set my bias to say 16, which is equivalent to a 75% opening. Run, run dynamics, run from current state. 
my valve position goes to 75 and my flow rate is 166.7 so essentially all I'm working with is just bias now I want to set my controller to see how I can get a stable oscillation so instead of having a proportional band equal to a very large number I'm going to set it equal to 50 this is equivalent to having a controller gain of 2 and I'll click OK run run dynamics run from current state and I look at my flow by changing that to a proportional band of 50 I am not at my target of 150 gallons per minute and everything is just operating smoothly I want to decrease my proportional band which is equivalent to increasing my gain so that I get stable oscillations so I'm going to decrease this to 25 and let's see what happens so go run dynamics run from current state and now if you look we're still not at our desired set point but I got stable oscillations by looking at my valve position and the amplitude is not too bad it's staying fairly constant over a few cycles and so that could be my ultimate proportional gain of 25 and or proportional band of 25 and the difference in time is we have a peak at about 10.27 minutes and 10 point pretty close to 87 minutes so my ultimate period is about 0.6 so I have a uh, ultimate proportional band of 25 which means I have a ultimate controller gain of 4 and so I will now put in the values that would be satisfactory so if my ultimate gain is as a value of 4 I probably would like my proportional band to be equal to 45% uh, of my controller gain which is about to, so I'll go back to approximately 50 okay and my integral time I can set at about 0.33 minutes and let's see what happens I'll click OK so run run dynamics run from current state and let's see how we this controller behaves okay I'm now very close to my target set point at 150 gallons per minute okay and the best way to test a controller is to see how it responds to a process deviation what would happen if my outlet pressure instead of being 20 psi say that that changed to say 30 psi how will my process respond to that uh, change in the process so I can now look at how that valve will respond run from current state and we see that the valve will open up and we still end up at our target value of 150 gallons per minute okay so the valve responded well let's look at a response to a change in set point change my set point from 150 to say 100 gallons per minute let's see how the controller works run from the current state and now we have uh, our gallons per minute goes to 100 change our outlet pressure back to 20 run run from current state and again the valve will respond and give us our target flow rate 
So now we have a valve that is very well controlled. It handles interruptions in the process and it also handles set point change as well. And so our control valve is fairly well tuned and that's how the Ziegler-Nichols technique is used.